Sit back and relax as you follow along with this video guide designed to help get you up and running quickly with Stack software. All right, let's jump into a quick overview of the software. We offer videos that go into more detail, so this is intended as a fast-paced guide to get you up and running. You'll start by entering a project name in this field in the upper left. Whether it's a business, a school, etc., enter the project name. You can specify the bid date by clicking on the calendar icon below. Everything below those two fields is optional. Click Create and Launch. Assuming you've already retrieved a file and have it stored on your computer, you will click Choose a Local File. Locate your file and select it. It's going to upload into the software. Then you will click Done. The file will begin to process. This upload can take a bit of time due to factors including file size and internet connection speed. The software takes the time to break the file out into individual pages that can be viewed as thumbnails for quick access. This is a smaller six-page example, but with much larger projects, this viewing scheme is very helpful and gets you to your measurements quickly. While that's processing through, let's look at navigation. The highlighted tab indicates we are in the Plans tab view. We will click the Takeoff tab next to it. This will take us to the drawing side of the software. For our example, we will choose this architectural drawing in the bottom left. Let's click on it to open it up. You'll notice that doing so opens the drawing with a quick access tab up above. With the tab open, we can click and hold to drag the page around as needed, and we can use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. If your mouse doesn't have a scroll wheel, we have incremental zoom tools located in the toolbar to the right. This plans tab is a static tab that does not go away, so you can use it to quickly view all of the plan pages and choose the next one you need. You can leave all of the tabs open up above for simple tab-to-tab -tab navigation, but if you wish to close a tab, simply clicking the red X will take care of that for you. The first thing we are going to do is set our scale. Our scale button in the bottom right shows that no scale is set. The first option is to calibrate with a known dimension such as this. The second option is to go by what is listed on the plan, which is a quarter inch in this case. We will click that scale button in the bottom right corner to open this scale box. We will click on the standard scales tab and open the drop down list of options. Then we will choose the quarter inch option. If you have a known dimension, that is the best way to set your scale. If your known dimension is obscured, you can click and hold the plan to move it however you need. Here we will enter 18 feet and 2 inches and click OK. Then we will draw a quick point-to-point -point line. That will set the scale for us. If the scale value looks odd, it's fine and perfectly accurate. Now let's run through some takeoffs and different measurements. For every different type of measurement we want to make, we will do a new takeoff. Our takeoff name will always be what we are going to measure, and then we will choose the proper corresponding measurement type. An area would be something like a floor or a ceiling. From elevation view, it could be the side of a building. Now we'll say we are doing 12 inch tile and we will choose area. We may add an optional description. When finished, the system will shade in our drawing with a color. We can choose a different color to replace whichever color the system chose. Drawing a measurement is as simple as clicking once to start, clicking once for each turn, and then double clicking to finish. If you are working with rectangular or square structures, it can be easier if you toggle from the Polygon tool to the Rectangle tool. With the Rectangle tool, we'll just click once to start and then double click to finish the drawing. Next, we will tackle a linear measurement with 12 gauge wire. All of our drawing tools work the same, so let's say that we are going to run some wire through this building to a junction box. One click to start, one click for every turn, and double click to finish at an outlet over here. And then we have an outlet over here that we want to include as well. Linear could include wire, PVC, HVAC, anything for which you need a linear measurement. Next will be count, so that includes outlets, fire extinguishers, signs, anything you need a count on. In this case, we will count outlets. 
we'll select count. Again, description and color are optional. With counts, we have an assortment of symbol options in various shapes and sizes. Select one, and now we will simply click anywhere an outlet is listed on the plan. The system will automatically track the total number of outlets marked. You can see here that we are three takeoffs into our project. When the system finishes processing, it will show us all three of our current measurements. We have six outlets, 377 square feet of tile between both rooms, and 41 linear feet of 12 gauge wire. Linear with drop is primarily for our electrical friends. We will say we're doing a wire with a drop. We'll zoom in to see this a little better. So let's say that we're going to run along the ceiling and then drop down to an outlet. We will indicate a six foot drop for each outlet. We will start right here. Notice the X indicating a drop. To remove the drop, we will hit our delete or backspace key. We will click for the turn, but hit delete to remove the drop. We will click here for a drop, and then I want to finish over here, but we'll hit delete once more to remove the drop. Now hit enter to finish the drawing. This takes the full linear run measurement and adds six feet for each instance of a drop. Next on our list is pitched area. Let's imagine we are taking off a sloped roof over this room. We'll enter shingle roof as our takeoff name and choose pitched area. The system will then prompt us for slope, our rise and run. We'll say this is 512. Now we are going to do an area measurement and then the system will account for that additional square footage. Here we can see all of our measurement values. Pitched linear will be a similar deal. Let's say we are taking off a hip and that it also has a rise and run of 512. We will draw where the hips would be for that roof and the system will account for that additional square footage. If we were doing the ridge along the top of the roof, we would simply do a linear measurement, since there is no slope. Let's say we are doing a surface area measurement for paint in order to know how much paint we need to buy. The system will prompt us to enter the wall height, which we will say nine feet and six inches. Now we will draw our linear measurement and the system will calculate the square footage for us. After taking a moment to load, it will provide us with all of our measurements so far. Next on the list is a volume 2D measurement. In our example, we'll say we are taking off a six inch slab. Let's change the color to something more clearly visible. For the prompted depth value, we will enter just the six inches to the inches field. Here, we are going to do an area measurement, which the system will multiply by the depth to give us our cubic yardage. Lastly, we will perform a volume 3D measurement for our concrete footer. We'll be prompted for the width and depth of the footer. We will say it's 12 by 24 inches. We will perform a linear measurement and then the system will calculate our cubic yardage of concrete for the footer. The measurements will take a moment to load. You can view them here as before, but now we will take a look over in the report side of the stack software. Takeoff Quantity Report is a nice, clean report that presents all of your primary measurements taken out to two decimals. Takeoff Summary Report will show both primary and secondary measurements. So in the case of our six inch slab, we will be provided values for square footage, linear footage, and the cubic yardage as well. Geometry by Takeoff Report drills down one step further. In the case of our 12 gauge wire, we have two linear runs that total the value listed at the top. 
This is a great report for finding things such as numbers that might look odd or incorrect. If you suspect an issue, you can click this little icon to transport you to the plan page and the measurement itself will be highlighted for quick verification. Now, if we wanted to edit or to delete something, we would select the edit arrow from the toolbar to the right and click the drawing directly. The drawing will be highlighted. While highlighted, the drawing can be freely repositioned. You can add any additional points you might have missed. If you wish to delete the selection entirely, you can do so by pressing your delete key or by choosing delete in the drop-down list within the toolbar. Now let's say we need to remove some negative space from a drawing, such as this bed for our example. We will select this cutout tool from the toolbar, which can only be used when a selection is highlighted. We'll draw the selection to remove it, and now we are good to go. The system will automatically take care of the math for us. There are plenty of markup tools available to us. We have a highlighter, a cloud icon that can be used to denote an area that requires extra attention, and a callout that can be used to leave an important message. The edit arrow tool from before can also be used for these items. We can move the callout, resize it, change the font size of the contained text, or change the color of the callout bubble. Now, the dimension line tool won't factor into our measurements, but will allow you to quickly get a great visual measurement on the screen. The text box tool simply lets you add text anywhere you wish. As before, this can be edited with the Edit Arrow tool. Last on our list is the Plan Legends. We will select the Legend tool. We'll place it anywhere we want, nice and big on the screen. It will provide your takeoffs with color coding and the primary measurement values. So when you're done, you could print this out, email it, or save it to your computer. In summation, we tackled uploading a project, drawing the different measurement types, how to edit those drawings, adding our markups, and then how to check out reports. For the pro side of the software, we are just going to do one more additional thing by adding an assembly. Let's click our shingle roof and choose Edit. Go down to the Items and Assemblies section below and then click the Add button. Open the Assemblies folder in the List view. We'll locate roofing and find the corresponding assembly. Click the assembly to attach it. We'll be prompted to enter necessary information. Any non-applicable information can be left alone. We are simply noting all of our needed materials for this roof. We will save the assembly. The reports in Pro will give us our materials and our pricing. Materials and quantities for my shingle roof. That was our quick start guide. Reach out to us if you have any questions. Also, remember to check out our other tutorial videos.